Hey guys, Lindsay here. Not at Carter Vintage today. Right now we are on the road in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania at the Artisan Guitar Showcase. A great boutique focused show that features I think around 60 different um, luthiers, both the small shop guys as well as some of the bigger shops like Bourgeois and Ferk. Just a wonderful range of acoustics and arch tops and electrics as well as a handful of stand makers and I think the guys from Heritage are here so lots of great folks to talk to. We're going to go inside and try out all the guitars, interview the luthiers, and promote the Carter Sell from Workshop side of things. Got the little postcards here. So let's go inside. I'm here with Guillaume Rancourt from Quebec. Uh, you have a bit of a, a, a story about getting here because two of your guitars that you're going to bring got stopped at the border. So you have a, a bit of a legacy collection here. You said of sister guitars, right? All kind of related. Yeah. So very excited to hear more about all three of these beautiful guitars. Yeah, well, these, these two were made in 2017 and 18 um, and they kind of are the, the exact same recipe for two different customers this one I made for my uh, my dealer in New York uh, CR guitars um, was a great person to work with and he asked for very specific things and I had these beautiful uh, flame um, sorry I missed the word the red cedar from Canada it's all salvage woods that I use and um, it's a very unusual top normally the grain patterns and all of that they wouldn't make sense to some people, but it's it's a it's a blooming sound. It's it's so complex and it's beautiful. So I, I made these two guitars pretty much at the same time, and it's the first time they meet in five years, which is really nice. So uh, I actually picked them up on the way here and got in them together at the hotel and played them a bit, and catching up with friends. It was nice. Yeah. Yeah, and then this one we've got over here is actually currently at Carter Vintage. Um, and yeah, we were able to get it up here fast enough for the show. I This is my first exposure to your work, and I, like, I'm like i not an art shop player, but this one was just, it's like such a compelling guitar to play, so responsive as like an acoustic guitar, or as uh, played acoustically. And I love the sort of like violin, like violin family style build you have there, which is different from those two. So yeah, I would love to hear more about this guitar and sort of the range of, of stuff that you do on your art shops. Yeah, the violin family. So I, I make upright basses as well. I'm, I'm, I came from learning the violin craft first and there's something very natural and organic about the way they think about it. It's a very simple way of thinking about the instruments. Everything is stripped down on the violin. There's not much. And I find guitars sometimes we put so much stuff on it but we kind of lose the focus of the acoustic guitar, the acoustic principles you need to. And so that's that's how I started to do those art stops. I just wanted to have a mix of some kind of a cello vibe in a guitar, which has pretty much the same kind of range and frequencies and size. And, um, and yeah, I just like, I like the subtle look of it and the varnish, it feels different. The guitar feels like wood. Some guitars feel like plastic, you know, the, the thick varnishes. Uh, I make I bake the, my varnish recipes in the workshop. It just smells perfect. Yeah, and then um, I don't know the, the resonance of it is important. I also carve the braces in the top. There's no uh, yeah I yeah. Just that was on the website. I've never heard of somebody doing that before. No, I know one other guy who does that. Uh, his name is McCarthy, and uh, we have different feelings about it, different ways of doing it, but the principle is the same. Um, it makes for very alive instruments right out the, right out of the, the box. You know, the first time I put strings on it, it's balanced and, and well articulate and there's no wolf tones or just because it's a one it's a one piece system. Everything works together well. There's no interference between different uh, wood grain pads or densities in the woods and all. So to me it just makes sense. That's how I started doing it. And uh, I also apply that technique to the upright bass. Uh, also, I don't have a sound post in the art, the, the, the bases I make, and um, yeah, I don't know, it's it's different, it's, I'm just doing what I like. <laughs> so Very cool. I'm happy that you find more of an acoustic vibe out of the, the art stuff uh, that you tried. That's the goal, I mean, I, I've learned classical guitar when I was younger, and I'd say 87% of the guitars I make are classic or guitar size, 15 inch, 15 and a quarter. I just find it very comfortable. And there, if you look at the ratio or, or volume, it, it looks like an OM type yeah. shape. Uh, so you kind of get that vibe where there's a lot of punch, a lot of dynamics, but it's great for finger style and solo playing. So that's, that's what's behind it, the thinking about it, yeah. 
Very cool. So you mentioned you, you came from the violin building world first. So are you a long time player? Did you play music as, as, a, as a child? Yeah, so I've always played music. I started guitars when I was seven. Uh, started making guitars when I was 12. Um, out of necessity, principally, we didn't have much money at the time. And uh, my dad and my grandfather were kind of inventors and they made everything. So um, my dad brought me to a lumber yard. They had mahogany and rosewood. And he said, you know, if you want guitars, you can just make them. And, and I got my, work, my grandfather's workshop. So I started making myself uh, Telecasters, Les Paul, Stratocasters and all of that. Just, to, just for the fun of playing. And then uh, the acoustic was always in the back. Uh, but I, it was daunting to me. I was like, can I do it? It seems complex and my approach started with the arch top and uh, yeah I kind of mixed the, the classical vibe with that and it just takes time so it's been 24 years now yeah do you build flat top acoustics as well I did a few um, I would like to make more I actually want to make any uh, like, there's so many instruments I have designed that I want to make uh, mandolins mandolin cellos all of that it just I need the time to do it so I, I did a few oh I have an OM model um, I'm looking to make more, but I have a lot of work, so it's uh, one thing at a time, like retirement project. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> retirement. <in> 50 years. <laughs> um, well, you mentioned that you use a lot of salvaged woods, yeah. so is, is, do you try to do that all the time, or yeah? Yeah, yeah, as much as I can, for many moral reasons. I uh, am a sensitive person, and I care a lot about the people. And the, the, the forestry section of our business is very tough and it affects people in real day and real life. And uh, yeah, I get, I get very uh, emotional about the way I select the woods. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I think it's obviously it's something that everybody I think is thinking more about now, yeah. but it's, it sounds like you've kind of been on the forefront of that for a little while. Um, and you're also making a documentary about Canadian luthiers, so yeah, that's going to factor into that a little bit too, right? Yeah, and it's probably going to be more than just Canadian luthiers, but mostly about the relationship between uh, a player and a, and a maker, which is a very special bond and, and relationship. Uh, my friend who's doing the documentary is there with us, and um, it's, uh, it's mostly to explain a bit of the background story between what brings a guitar to life when a, when, a, when a player has it in his hand, where it comes from, what is involved in the process, and as far as salvaging the woods and, and how people learned about the craft and, and the exchange that exists between makers as well. There's so much to, to learn from everyone. So, I mean, it's going to be about so many things, but and it, it's, it takes the time it takes. We're just starting to input interviews and, and get uh, people from Canada and the US to talk about where they come from, how they started making guitars, why is the relationship is so important with the people we work with. And yeah, I mean, it's all about that. I, I don't know, for me, guitar making is a, is a personal relationship with humans. And, and if they can feel my humanity in the guitars while they have it and it's inspiring, then we both get, get something out of it. So. Yeah. Oh, that's that's so beautifully said. Well, that kind of dovetails into my, my next question. Um, have you built for slash do you have a dream musician who you would love to craft a guitar for who really you think like suits your style of building really well? Oh, wow. There's two different sides of that coin. I have a favorite musicians I want to make a guitar for. I'm not sure that is because it's exactly the type of guitar I want to make, but it would be more as a thank you for what they brought to my life. So I was in touch with that person and uh, I don't know how it's gonna go. Uh, it's David Gilmore from Pink Floyd and um, I don't know, this guy just changed everything for me. Yeah, so, uh, but is it, would it be a guitar that, I don't know, I, it's less about the guitar and, and more about thanking someone, yeah. Very cool. Well, I think I think that's all my questions for the, for now. But um, yeah, <laughs> thank you so much for doing this. People can find this guitar at CarterVintage.com and learn more about it. Hopefully, see a great demo soon. Where can they learn more about you? 
website, rencordguitars.com, uh, um, Instagram, I guess. I'm not a very big social person, but um, yeah, you can find anything you want on Rencord Guitars. There's so much stuff online. And um, our YouTube channel has, uh, I don't know, maybe 50 nice videos of guitars. Uh, we did. I have a really nice session guy in Canada, uh, Olivier Laroche, a good friend of mine. And uh, we did a few nice sessions with guitars and all of that. So there's there's a lot of content to find. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Guillaume.